Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Zika talks about me back again with another video. I don't really usually do these type of videos, but I see Northside did a video on me. So I'm like, you know what? Let me react to what he had to say. Because I know he, I know he does these videos all the time. So check out Northside. He's reacting to one of my YouTube shorts. Yeah, so he's reacting to one of my YouTube shorts on on the topic of Jorginho potentially signing a new contract. So let me just uh, see what he had to say on this. There's just a quick advert that had to play. So let's let's see what he had to say about what I had to say on Jorginho signing a new contract. So if you guys don't know, Jorginho has officially now signed a new contract. Yes, he has officially signed a new contract. And with him officially signing the new contract, we don't have to now worry about having to replace him. And I think Jorginho is decent squad player he's done a good job this season and i see the value in keeping him especially on a one-year deal where you're not having to give him a massive pay rise or anything like that and i was speaking about this i think a couple months back after the liverpool performance that he had at the emirates where he absolutely bossed liverpool so yeah let me bring you back to what northside had to say and just my thoughts on what northside had to say and you'll you'll see it right here. So yeah, if you guys haven't already subscribed to Northside's channel, I do encourage you guys to do that. Even though he does think differently to me, he's an Arsenal fan, and it's also interesting to get a different perspective at times. But yeah, uh, let's let's hear what he had to say. Yes, it would be a stopgap, but it would save us from having to sign another player, maybe two. I'm so scared of change. Everything is oh, let's just keep him just because he can do a job. It's not about keeping him to just do a job, and it's not about being scared of change. I personally think Jorginho brings something to this team, experience, a second coach on the pitch, and he's always fit and available to benefit the side. This season, he's shown throughout many injuries that we've had, he's always shown up and he's been reliable. Besides the Tottenham game, he hasn't put a foot wrong. Jorginho hasn't regressed. Okay. Jorginho hasn't regressed. I don't think I said that. No problem. I will explain everything, son filho da puta. I will explain everything. Jorginho, 23-24. 23 Premier League starts, yeah? Two appearance, uh, sorry, 23 appearances, two assists. Why are we judging Jorginho on assists north side? Why are we judging Jorginho as a defensive midfielder on his assists? And his goals, I'm confused. Do you want your defensive midfielders to, to get you goals and assists? Is that what you need from your defensive midfielders? Or is there a role to dictate the play? Is there a role to, to play progressive passes? Is there a role to link up the play? Is there a role to, to, have, to have the ball in the areas of the pitch and, reg, uh, and be a register and pass it around? Come on, man. Why are we doing this? Two assists in 23 appearances. In the Champions League, this Vila da Puta has got nine appearances, one assist. Zero ass goals and assists in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. What are we talking about here? Man are talking that like we should keep him because he's ripping up trees. Where is the experience? Where is the experience? I don't understand. The experience showed against Liverpool. The experience showed against Man City. The experience showed against the top sides when he came in and he's done a really good job in that midfield. The experience showed when we were missing Thomas Partey. The experience showed on numerous occasions when we were down players in that midfield and he stepped up to the occasion and, and he was the, and he was the other statement putting things together. I genuinely don't think you are making a valid point here, but let's continue. When man are talking to me about his experience, bro. When you look at the numbers, then you look at the fact that he's losing a yard of pace. He's never been fast in the first place, just like you said. Why are we keeping on to him? Why? His pace is not the part of his game that we value. His pace is not the part of his game that we look at and say is the valuable piece to the puzzle. Like, I, I don't think you actually value Jorginho as a footballer and look at the skill sets and traits that he actually brings to the table that benefits the team. I don't think you actually value the ball progression. I don't think you value the progressive passes. This is a man who is in the 96th percentile when it comes to passes and and success. And, and, and when you look at RB ref, for example, and you look at this right here, progressive passes, this is what he is there for. Pass completion, keeping it tidy, 
uh, having the most touches. This is what he's there for, progressive passes. He is one of the highest players in world football at progressive passes, 96 percentile. Only like 4% more. That, and you, you'll be at like the like not 100 percentile. Let's be honest. This this is this is the main reason why we have him in the team. We don't have him in the team to create goals. We don't have him in the team to to set up assists and set up goals. But you know what? It is a positive if he if he does that on on an occasion. But let's hear what else Norsa has to say about him. Can we hold on to this thing about people that don't understand? It? Yeah. And if you want to compare that, yeah, 22, 23 in the Premier League, 32 appearances, two goals, one assist, Jorginho. Yeah. Six uh, appearances in the Champions League, one assist. Is it... Before, while we're on ad break, let me ask you guys this. Is Northside making a valid point or is he just ranting about something that has nothing to do with the reason why we gave Jorginho the new deal? Jorginho is an older player in this team. Yes, he adds experience. Plus, he's a, he, he's another coach on the pitch. He's somebody else who understands the situation. And we've seen with his performances this season, if I can pull up some of his performances this season where he's absolutely killed it, you can actually see the impact that he had even without getting a goal, even without necessarily getting an assist. For example, if I pull up his uh, his performance versus... Uh, let's, let's start with the Liverpool game. Let's start with the Liverpool game. How crucial was he in that win versus Liverpool, the three the three one victory versus Liverpool, where he started in the midfield? What did he do in that game? In that game, let me show you guys what he did in that game before 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 we continue on with Northside's attack on Jorginho. In this game, he had played seventy one minutes. Right in that in those seventy one minutes. He, he created one chance. He was the main guy who was consecutively getting uh, most of the touches in the midfield. Defensively, he defensively he, he was putting in the work rate also. As you can see here, he was winning a lot of the duels, making getting a lot of the clearances, and he was one of the main men in that match. Jorginho has also had other, other performances where he was a standout pro, a player, in my opinion. For example, let me go to the Men City game. When was that? Man City game earlier in the season where we won one 0 He was integral to getting us this victory. the The midfield, the midfield of City that game, of course, was a little bit weaker. But Jorginho's ability to dictate the play, to help create, to push the ball forward, to progress the ball into the final third. Look at that seven passes into the final third. That is what you're there for. He's not there to be the guy who scores the goals. He's not there to be the guy who sets up the assist. He's there to get the ball from the defense, progress the ball quickly, and to use his passing range and his ability to pass to help this team in the final third. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to hear what else Northside has to say because this is, this is, uh, I'm interested, I'm intrigued, I'm interested. I want to know what is his beef with Jorginho? Is it that he wants Arsenal to go sign? four midfielders, three midfielders in the summer, because I still do believe we potentially will sign two. Maybe one is a Bruno Gamarish, maybe another one is somebody else. But at this moment in time, I think if you're going to let Elneny go, you're going to let Thomas Partey go, and then you also let Jorginho go, you're letting go of two meaningful pieces to your, to your attack, I mean, to your midfield, a midfield that you already needed to add another midfielder on top of that. So why would you let rid of all these players? It's, it's safer as a club to keep one of them and to also, while you're doing that, bring in another player who can take over the reins in the future, step by step. You don't need to go and change everything in one summer. But let's hear what Norsa says. I don't understand it. Move on. These men told me when we get champions. Move on. But for what? You don't want to just move on for moving on sake. Look at see, look at Chelsea. They moved on from all these players, but necessarily haven't gotten much better. We're in a situation where I trust the manager and I trust the board and I trust what the decisions that they're making because they've been making the right decisions as of late. Champions League football, we can get world class players that we're going to be able to pull world class players in. We we can attract world class players, but we're not at the stage where. We need to still, we still need to fix up some of the squad. We can't just go and drop money on a Kylian Mbappe at this moment in time. That's just not what we do as a club. Also, these men just talk so much crap. 
They talk so much crap. The one good thing that he brings to the team, he's, his best attributes are not defensive, yeah? It's his passing range, yeah? But even then, he's not affecting us that much. We, we got... He's not affecting us that much. Hmm. Interesting. Jorginho is not affecting us that much. I am confused. I'm confused. Because if Jorginho is not affecting us that much... Why would he be playing so much? Why would he be? Why would he get so much game time? Why would Jorginho be in the team consistently if he wasn't affecting us that much? Jorginho. Okay, so I'm going to go on MB data and I'm going to show you guys something. Jorginho. Uh, who should we compare Jorginho to? Let's compare Jorginho to uh, Parte uh, last season. Let's compare Jorginho to um, Rice this season. Let's compare Jorginho to Jorginho himself at Chelsea. Uh, no, Jorginho last season. No. So yeah. So this is what. So so what I'm going to show you guys now is what Jorginho actually brings to the table. Because Northside clearly doesn't see what Jorginho brings to the table. And this, this graph is going to explain to you perfectly what Jorginho brings to the table. Now, if you can see here, there is three different colors. The red is Thomas Partey. The blue is Jorginho. And the yellow is Rice. What Rice... Uh, Jorginho doesn't have the legs. So he doesn't carry the ball as much as, as those guys. Right? Defensive actions. He actually has more defensive actions. Duels. He actually has more duels this season than, than than the other two. And this is this is averaged out per 90 stats also, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, this is a percentage of your per 90 stats also. And then you go to then you go to progressive passes. As you can see, he's the most progressive passer. As you can see here, he is the most forward passer. As you can see here, he has one of the highest percentages when it comes to passing. So you can see right there what he brings to the table. He's a defensive midfielder that progresses the ball. He does not create as much key passes because that's not his job. And he doesn't carry the ball into the attacking final third. That's not his job. What he does, he's a he's an elite at. And even though he he's a little bit older, losing him and Partey in the same transfer window, it's a lot to replace. You're better off keeping him as a stopgap for one year. It doesn't hurt anybody, and I think he's an utmost professional, and he benefits the side. Northside, you're my guy, but I just don't get why you're upset. I really don't. 